Hello friends, so today we talk about the counter chart for individual observations. Uh, in this video, we talk about the uh, moving range chart, MR chart, and individual chart or high chart. So let's get started. So far, we talk about monitoring processes where we collect variable data in rational subgroups. But uh, as you know, in many processes, it makes more sense to collect individual observations rather than subgroups. For example, uh, uh, consider a real estate corporation. When customers decide to purchase a home, they fill out a real estate contract with their agent. Uh, this process takes time, and the real estate company wants to know if the time it takes to complete the contract is in statistical control. Here, uh, real estate contracts are not necessarily draw up within a predetermined schedule because each contract depends on when a potential buyer puts a bid on a house. Uh, as a result, there is only one observation per subgroup. The length of time it takes to complete a real estate contract. So how do we monitor a process when we have individual observations or one observation per subgroup? We can use a moving range chart and an individual chart to monitor individual observations collected from a process. Both of these control charts are useful when we have uh, when <coughs> we have variables data in uh, data that have only one observation per subgroup. Where else might it make some uh, make more sense to make to take only one measurement of some quality characteristic from a process in manufacturing? Some processes are expensive to measure, especially uh, destructive testing in which the test involves a product being destroyed. Oftentimes, product, products take a long time to produce, or a sample may simply constitute one distinct batch. For individual observations are also used for business and transactional application. The time it takes to complete a contract or answer a question depends on the type of contract or question. So we would generate separate contract charts by category. The number of people making a reservation at a restaurant per day or the amount of money collected for a care a charity drive each year are also examples where a subgroup size of one is most appropriate. Let's review. Uh, we'll learn more about moving range and individual charts. These charts are used to study processes in which we collect one observation of variables data per sample subgroup. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, moving range charts. In the previous lesson, we consider a real estate contract draw up at IBC Corporation. We want to know whether the time it takes to fill out a, a, a real estate contract is con consistent over time. To assess the stability of the contract process, we can use contract charts to monitor individual observations of contract completion times. In the last section, we first collected rational subgroups and determined whether variation within these subgroups was in statistical control. But um, how do we determine within subgroup variation when we have subgroup, uh, subgroups of size 1? When we have uh, individual measurements, we can create uh, artificial subgroups by looking at successive observations and use these observations to create a moving range chart. Also, we call an uh, 
MR chart. This chart uh, allows us to monitor the variability within successive observations. To illustrate, let's uh, calculate the first moving range of contract completion times. Look at the first observation of hourly completion times. We want to assess variability from one contract to the next. Because we don't have more than one observation per subgroup, we can't calculate the true within subgroup variability, but we can estimate, estimate by it by looking at the subsequent observation and taking the absolute difference. The first two observations make up, make up our first moving range. The difference is the first point on our MR chart. We do the same thing for the next observation. The second moving range consists of the absolute difference between the second and third observation. Their difference is the second point on the MR chart. The third subgroup consists of the third and fourth observations. Their difference is the third point on the chart. We continue moving along the data se uh, sequence in this way to create the rest of our subgroups. Each successive subgroup contains two co uh, consecutive observations of completion times. Uh, the number uh, of observations in each subgroup is called the length of moving range or the span. Two is standard. But in some cases, it may make sense to use a longer span. The range for the su uh, these successive subgroups are the points on our MR chart. These range, uh, ranges are called moving range. Now we need to draw a center line and the control limit. The mean of moving range moving range MR bar is 1.386. This is our center line. Now we add the control limit. For the completion times, the upper control limit is 4.528 and the lower control limit, uh, limit is at zero. S is a standard uh, estimated standard deviation or historical specified standard deviation. So here's a formula to calculate the upper control limit and lower control limit. So we uh, talk about this uh, formula later. Okay, remember a process is our control if and if points fall outside of the control limit or if a pattern is evident in the control chart. Okay, so here, here's an example. So does the MR chart indicate that process variation from contract to contract is in control? Okay, so we can see here. Because no, no moving range, uh, room, no, no moving ranges are outside of the control limit, and no pattern exists, the so the variation is in control. Let's review the MR chart plus artificial subgroups of successive observations over time to monitor process variation. The length of moving range is the number of observations we spend when creating our successive subgroups. By looking for out of control points and patterns in variation, we can use MR charts to help us spot unwanted sources of variation in our process. Okay, so let's talk about the individual charts or eye charts. Uh, so an individual chart is a control chart of uh, uh, individual observations 
uh, we can use in your viewers charts to track the process level and detect the presence of special causes when the sample size is one uh, in the last le lesson we examine in your viewer of observations of uh, real estate contract completion times collected at uh, uh, real estate corporation we made the moving range mr moving range chart contract chart by creating artificial subgroups of successive observations and plot subgroup ranges over time uh, according to the mr chart variation in completion times is in statistical control now that we know process variation is in control we can assess the stability of the completion times by looking at an individual chart the individual chart also called an ir uh, an r chart monitors the process mean by plotting uh, by plotting uh, individual observations on a time series plot. Let's create an individual chart for the completion times. The first real estate contract took uh, uh, 10.3 hours to complete, and this is the first point plotted on the chart. The second point, uh, the second contract took 8.8 .8 hours, and we and we add the remaining observations and then we connect the points the mean time it took to fill out a real estate contract is uh, 8.9.028 hours we call this value x bar and plot our center line here now we add the control limits for the eye chart the control limits are based on the mean of the moving ranges if the moving range moving ranges are out of control then our control limits uh, control limits on the eye chart are invalid we draw upper uh, the upper and control limit at three sigma limits above the center line and draw the lower control limit at three sigma limits below the center line here the formula to calculate the lower control limit and upper control limit so we'll talk more detail about this later in the next uh, video so uh, is this process in control you can see here this point is outside of the control limit which indicates that the process is out of control so this contract took exceptional long time to complete when we find evidence of a sustainable cost variation in a process we should investigate this point to find out why it happened how can we use this chart to improve the process at a uh, the real estate corporation we can investigate the contract that took significantly longer than the others this contract took 12 point 12.2 hours to complete perhaps a special circumstance, circumstance required part of the contract to be written or maybe the, uh, this agent is lower than the rest based on the chart should the company consider changing their process the answer depends on what is acceptable to the corporation the longer completion time on this contract may be due to an isolated circumstance in which case it's probably not worth changing the process but if the contract took longer to complete because the form instructions are unclear then it might be worth upgrading the process to save time on future contracts whenever our process is our contract